So hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Veronica B. Cole and I center plus size sewing, plus size bodies, plus size creations um, on my channel. So last video, you guys were like, oh, we wanna know more about this vintage sewing book. And let me tell you guys how I have really tried hard to locate more of these little books on the internet to no avail. And if you're like, Veronica, what are you even talking about at this point in time? Stay tuned because I'm going to introduce you to the book. In my last video, I had the honor of collaborating with Stephanie from Stephanie Canada, who is, of course, our vintage baddie. And I, I don't know if I would have ever described myself as someone who was like, oh, I really enjoy vintage apparel or vintage makes or anything like that. Not because I don't like the silhouettes, because as it turns out, when we take a look at these silhouettes, I don't know, your girl might be a vintage baddie as well. But I just never saw plus size bodies making this available. And before y'all come over here and say, oh, but Gertie, that's, we'll come back to that another, another time, okay? So yeah, I didn't think that it was for me because even seeing like the big five patterns coming out, you know who's not included in those vintage patterns? The bodacious bodies, okay? The curvy girls, the plus size lovers, right? And it's so odd to me because it's as if we didn't used to have paintings and sculptures dedicated to the roles that we have. I digress because that's not even what I came here to talk about. What I came to actually talk about today is this here book. Now, Stephanie, on Stephanie's channel, Stephanie actually did a one hour make from this book as well. And I loved the way that she did it. So we're gonna do something similar as far as just touring the book, right? Because um, this little book, I promise you if I could find another copy, I would buy all of them up. They came out with different versions of this book too. They have one that is kind of like more boho chic uh, patterns. And if we're being completely honest, this is the book that I'm looking for. So if you guys happen to see this tiny little book, this was like 50 cents at the checkout line at some point in time, not any point in time where I was alive or else your girl would have definitely picked them all up. But they can't, they have another version of this tiny little book that has the more boho, bohemian style fashions in it. And I am so interested to kind of see what's inside of there. But let's talk about this book. Now, of course, I'm also going to be looking down as I talk about the book, but I'm also going to make sure that the pages are presented here via photo, video, or something along those lines. Listen, your girl is so getting better at being on YouTube. It's funny because when Stephanie was here, I was just like, Stephanie, I just love your YouTube videos. Like, you're so engaging. Like, I love your transitions. I love just kind of like all of the foresight and the forethought that you put into your videos. I love how she does like the zoom in on her face and she's got like her maniacal laugh which everyone knows what that means and I was like she was like but girl like it took me time to get here so don't don't beat yourself up just keep publishing so that's what we're doing right we've got our hat on we're get we're giving sporty spice today without the hair yeah I just I'm sorry we're gonna we're gonna digress for a moment okay I just came from dropping my oldest child off at high school. I know. How do I have a high schooler when I look like this? I'm 41. My birthday literally just passed. Okay. Um, and I have feelings, but involved in those feelings were not the feeling that I could get up and put on anything other than a hat to cover up the fact that I did nothing with my hair before I went to bed to preserve my curls, as well as like a onesie, right? Literally, that's all we had in us today, okay? Um, but it's not gonna stop me from recording for you, not at all, okay? And I figure we are on a time crunch because I've gotta go back and pick her up and then I have to come back and I have to make leggings in a matching top because I'm teaching that class tonight. Digression is now over. So anyway, let's take a tour of this book and I'm going to share with you, of course, the whole purpose behind this little book 
one of some of my favorite features as well as all of the patterns that it includes. Now, one of the big things about this book is that it tells that all of the patterns that are inside of here can be made in an hour or less. Now, if we take a look at my video that I did the skirt and the top in, that video is 20 minutes. It took me less time, way, it took me way under an hour to make all of that. I do feel like most of my time was spent walking around um, Top Shift Studio trying to find um, the certain things that I was going to need in order to kind of make fetch happen. But if I were to have done that at home, y'all, it would have been done so fast, especially because my setup does include a rotary cutter that has fresh blades. Because listen, one thing about me is we're not going to have unfresh blades in my rotary cutter, okay? And then I also have a mat that's set up. So also functioning in my own space, it probably would have taken less time. So the goal of the book is for you to, one, draft your own pattern from your measurements, which I love, right? As someone who drafts patterns, I love the freedom that it gives me to be able to make a pattern with my measurements and know that it's going to fit, right? And I love how they kind of do that in here. So it kind of gives some high level pattern drafting for the person who may or may not be interested in actually taking a course on pattern drafting. Also, would you guys like me to do a review on pattern drafting courses or books? Let me know. Um, so I really love the freedom that that provides. And so in doing that, that means that all of these patterns in here are in fact size inclusive plus size baddie friendly. Okay. The other thing that I really love about this book is the versatility of the patterns that are inside. They are not only giving you like dresses or skirts. They're also giving you other things. So let's go through some of my, some of my favorite patterns or We'll just go through all the patterns that are in this book so that you can be scouring the internet along with me. But also, I promise you, I'm about to start taking pictures of every single page inside of here because, friends, I have to send this book back to Stephanie because she accidentally left it here. I'm not going to lie. I'm. It was in my purse and I completely forgot to give it to her. But I also have a box of vintage patterns that I want to send her. So it's going to go back there so I don't get to keep it. So let's go through the patterns that are involved here and see what we have available to us. So starting out with the introduction, I do love the vote of confidence that they are giving us because it starts off with a note to the sewer and non-sewer. And I want to point out that they did not say seamstress. It says sewer. I'm gonna just, we're going to have a picture. You can sew it and you don't know it. Y'all, Phyllis was a poet and she knew it. Yes. We are here for Phyllis out here dropping these hot fire lyrics for us to empower us to make our own wardrobe. I love you, Phyllis. I'm sure you're not around anymore, but girl, yes. And so I love the vote of confidence that, of course, that they start with. But then she also includes a section on sewing shortcuts. Now, if you guys remember from my video, Stephanie told me that I was not allowed to take any modern day shortcuts, any modern day sewing shortcuts. But I love how they actually give us some vintage shortcuts in here. So um, she speaks on buttonholes, how to do your buttonholes, um, how to avoid a nasty buttonhole. She speaks to, of course, different closures. Um, she talks about installing zippers, which can be really scary for some people, um, as well as how to do waistbands. And here's the thing. When you learn order of construction or even just how to construct certain things, there's a lot of the directions and tutorials that you can skip over. Why? Because you have a method that works for you. If we're being completely honest, when it comes time to even talking about like putting in um, zipper flies and things like that, like I have a method that I really like. So I may or may not follow the directions or the tutorials that come with it. She talks about having comfortability with um, waistbands. She talks about hems as well as covered buttons and belts. I'm actually getting ready to start on the co-trousers by daughter Judy by daughter Judy. And it actually comes with a belt. Um, she talks about trimmings and then she has some terms that you should know, which of course are very important when you're cutting out fabric, which includes bias, understanding where the bias is, how to cut diagonal on the fabric to get the proper drape. She talks about, of course, the right side, the wrong side of fabric and what facing is. Now, facing is something that was new for me a couple of years ago, because again, I'm self-taught. I didn't know what a facing was. I was like, what is this? So I think that her, the way that she breaks things down in this book 
makes it so that sewing is not something that is so far-fetched and it feels like you'll never be able to do it. So I really, really love that. So let's get into the patterns, okay? The first pattern that she has is the basic shift dress. And I love this because not only does she have the, um, the basics for how you go ahead and draft this pattern for you because she does include a zipper entry to it. So it's drafted for a woven pattern, but she also gives some fun kind of pattern hacks that you can do along with it, including color blocking, adding in like a banded or um, adding in like a different color at the bottom, um, adding some like little trim around the front, adding a belt. I love that, right? So um, she gives different variations of the shift dress, including the hostess gown, the over blouse, as well as the sleeveless jacket, which come on, teaching us how to make a jacket from a shift dress. Come on, Phyllis. I love this. She does, of course, give us assembly instructions for each of the pieces, as well as different variations. She talks about how you can use that shift dress um, base and turn it into an A-line dress, which of course your shift dress is going to just be kind of basic straight down, not going out at all. Whereas your A-line dress is shaped like an A. She talks about how you can hack this into a V-neck over blouse or dress as well as a vest. And we know that vests right now are having a moment, which I love. Um, the next pattern is the yoke dress, meaning of course it's got this top yoke. Love it. Um, it's super cute, but she goes on to share how you can do a pleated as well as a full yoke dress, um, and adding gathers in as a different variation. Then of course we have the panel dress, the panel dress, super cute. Um, I love this because it's giving kind of like a pinafore feel. Um, then she's got the gathered neck dress. Now the gathered neck dress is giving like a peasant feel for what we're having right now with this cottage core moment, um, which I honestly hope stays because I do really love seeing the girlies out with their cottage core dresses on. Um, but making it super simple, as well as including the variations of having both sleeves as well as being sleeveless, which we love. Okay. Now they call this a macaroni strap dress. Very fun, funny, quick story. Um, the macaroni strap dress, of course, is just simply a spaghetti strap dress, but I grew up calling it spaghetti straps. Now, my daughter, my oldest one, who I was just talking about going to high school, she used to call it macaroni or sp not spaghetti, but macaroni straps. And I was like, why do you call it that? And I used to, I used to get the biggest kick out of it. Come to find out, sis was right the entire time. It was me. It was me, right? So anyway, this macaroni strap dress, this is something I definitely want to, to make for myself as well as wear because it is just so cute. Okay, now before we get to this ne the next couple of dresses, I want to give a forewarning here that um, at the time that this book was made and published, we didn't have, we didn't have more PC terminology, right? And I don't wanna say PC as though it's like, oh, it's just because people are too sensitive. No, right. We didn't, they didn't have, they didn't understand the impact of the words back then. And, um, so this is reflected in some of the pattern names as well. Okay. Just a little preface, a little note to audience members. Okay. Leave it there. All right. Next up, we've got the Mexican dress. So now this Mexican dress is kind of a loose oversized, um, it's giving a little bit of, I don't want to say it's giving moo, moo, but it's definitely giving an oversized, very flowy dress. And of course it does come with sleeves as well as different variations that you can do, including a belt, including ruffles at the sleeve, as well as the hemline, which I love. It's very cute. And I do think that adding this, the belt to it is one of the things that would make it something that I would actually wear. Then we've got the belted jumper and skirt, just like how it sounds. It's giving classic like grade school jumper. Um, but honestly, it's that is kind of back back in style now. If I'm being like honest about some of the patterns that I've seen. Also, shout out to me because I'm I painted this mug. I painted it myself. 
I am not fully satisfied with how it turned out, but whatever. Anyway, so we've got that belted jumper. It includes a belt. It includes um, pockets. So cute. Um, then we've got, of course, a straight skirt, which is the one that I made. And again, the reason why I made the straight skirt is because Serena, aka Serena, I just love how she looks whenever she wears hers. I just think that it is the cutest thing in the world. Um, I am going to alter mine because when I was at the studio, it did not have a wider, um, a wider elastic. And this actually calls for, um, some thicker elastic. Like we're talking about like an inch to an inch and a half. And y'all, I put like three quarter inch in mine. So I want mine to be a little bit thicker, especially because the hem is a thick hem and I did not think I was going to love that thick hem as much as I do. So I do love that thick hem and I want the same thing for my waistband. So, um, and even developing that was really easy. That straight skirt. Now the full and pleated skirt. I love how they do this. Why? Because I created the Presley skirt, which is a knit pattern for, um, a pleated skirt right? Now this one shows us how to put it together for obviously a woven, but if it works for woven, it works for knit. So I was really excited to see this because I did eight, a total of eight pleats in my, in my skirt. And this is giving us way more, but it's also showing us how we can draft it for ourselves. So who knows, I might do another pleated skirt that's woven and do a tutorial for that. Now there's also the wrap around skirt. Okay. So listen, I literally yesterday as I was going through, cause I feel really uninspired by my closet right now. And so I was like, oh girl, we've got to like, we really need to go ahead and take a look at some inspiration and develop a plan of action for making this wardrobe, something that you legit want to get, it, it, you know, get dressed with. So I wanted to do a wrap skirt, like, um, nothing too complicated, just a little sitch, you know, wrap around cute little number. And in here, they've got the pattern for a wraparound skirt. So y'all already know that that is going to be a tutorial that comes up on this channel as well, because I have the fabric. I know you want to see the fabric. So I'm going to show it to you right now because it's right next to me. So I'm thinking either this fabric, both of these fabrics have come from Boho fabrics, which I absolutely love. So I'm thinking either this fabric, which is, oh God, this, oh, that's not even the right side. Look at this like get into that beautiful fabric. So I'm thinking either that fabric and then I also have this fabric too. This is actually two panels, which I thought would work out well, but look at this. Anyway, so I think I'm going to do my, my skirt out of one of these, these fabrics, but that wraparound skirt, listen, it's coming y'all. So the variation for this skirt is to, um, do a little curve front, which I like, but I think for the version that I want to do of mine, it's probably going to just be just the square, the squared up curves. So I do love that. Then of course they call, they did, they call it the ice skating skirt, which makes sense because today we call it a skater skirt. And, um, so basically your, your basic circle skirt. So they talk about how you can go ahead and make that. In addition to, they have a special, they have two special skirts. One is the country skirt and it is the full skirt or the full skater skirt cut six inches shorter. So we're showing some thigh. <laughs> I love that for us. As well as the country skirt, which features a, like a little, um, ruffle on the bottom. That's a lot of ruffling y'all. It's a lot of ruffling. So if you see someone with that skirt on, just give them props. Okay. Okay, so now this is one of the areas that one of our not so like current terms is considered. So we've got the Indian robe. Okay. And here's the thing. It's not a bad robe. It's cute. But like, we're going to just leave it at that. You guys will see the picture and decide going forward what y'all feel about that. Next up, and this is what we thought that I was going to do. This is what Stephanie thought I was going to do, which is the kimono robe, which I was this close to doing because in my opinion, one, 
The kimono style is one of my favorite silhouettes in the world. Um, I love Asian culture. I love Asian, Asian styles. Um, so when I saw this, I was like, I, uh, I might need to do it, but I didn't. Right. Because I felt like that would be actually kind of obvious for me, but it's beautiful. It does come with the option to do a belt. Um, and I, I think that it's just a beautiful silhouette to be completely honest. It's giving, um, it's definitely giving what we're in season four, which is of course the moo moo. If you're like, girl, how is a moo in season? Let me tell you something. Okay. Let me, let me tell you something. Moo used to be considered unsexy, but you put on a moo moo with that little without a little pantalone, a little panty underneath there. And your booty starts to bounce when you walk. And, you know, this is, of course, for those who are, you know, trying to turn on their special someone. The special someone see that booty bouncing and the moo-moos will always be in season, right? That's a, that's all I'm going to say, right? So we'll leave it there. We've planted that seed for you. And we'll also do a tutorial on the channel for that too, okay? I want everybody to have their booties bouncing for their significant others, right? I see nothing wrong with it. Then we've got the hostess wraparound dress, which is just kind of what it sounds like. Um, it's, th this honestly is not something that I would probably wear if we're being completely honest, but I have seen it worn in a way where I've been like, maybe your girl could get with that. But the hostess wraparound is just your, your standard hostess dress that is also featuring a wraparound option. Very simple, um, one back piece, and then you have the same front pieces, cut mirror image, along with a little tie to hold it all together, which love that for us. Then we've got the sandwich, the sandwich board slipover. Yeah. If you're thinking sandwich board, you're going the right, right way because it's literally just, you're putting it over your head and doing a tie. So now I'm going to do a tutorial for this, but I'm, I'm going to make it so that it is a top versus kind of like a dress. Um, I've seen something very recent that literally last week. And I was like, I need to do a tutorial for this because this is so cute and I would love to wear it. So I will show how I make it. And I'm going to do a couple of things that are different with it so that, you know, y'all will see, you guys will see. Um, then we've got a, just your basic poncho, right? Um, just the pullover poncho. I love that for us. I'm not going to lie. Your girl was an avid poncho wearer when it came out. Well, when it was really big in the nineties, um, we definitely had the poncho on lock and I definitely have like a poncho sitch, like poncho style, like scarf in my closet right now. So then we've got a, um, basic cape. Definitely making this. I do not love wearing jackets. I grew up in the North. I'm from New York. And every year we would have to wear these super thick jackets. And I would feel like I was Marshmallow Man as I was in them. Because of course you had to layer underneath the jacket. Now I'm like, can I just get like a capelet or something? So we're definitely going to be making this basic cape. It's so cute. Um, and it, it features some like welt pockets. For your your hands to go through. I love it. I love it. Yes. Love it. Um, there's a couple of different variations. Obviously, the cape lit being one as well as the full size cape. Then they did an open cape, which I mean it's cute. I don't know. It's not giving me like this is too different than like a couple of other things, but it's cute. I could see it definitely being warm. Then we've got a pinafore. I was just talking about the pinafore. And the cute thing about the pinafore, of course, is that it can be made based upon the size, right? As everything inside of this little book can be. That means that you can make it for kids or adults because pinafores for adults, it's a thing. But we also have the apron pinafore, which I love. I actually want to do like a half apron pinafore so that I can have my sewing tools on me as I'm sewing. So that way, like, I, I feel like whenever I'm cutting, I'm always like looking for my shears or I'm always looking for my rotary cutter. And y'all, that thing just be disappearing. I just need like some pockets. Anyway, so we'll be making that. Um, and then, of course, the hostess aprons. 
which I guess is more similar to what I'd like to do for my very own like apron. Maybe this utility apron, which they do have a pattern for. So we've got the utility apron, which we're going to make for sewing. So we're going to turn that into a sewing utility apron. Okay. Now let's move into some beach stuff because they got some beach stuff. So we've got the bathing suit cover up as well as a hat. I can't believe that they did a hat. Anyway, I love that for us because safety first. We can't have our faces out there the way that climate change is coming down and beating down on us, okay? And then the cutest thing in the world are these earmuffs because it's almost like they're on a ribbon so you can adjust where the earmuffs are and tie underneath your neck and get like this. I think it's cute. I don't know if my kids will wear it, but your girl might wear it. And then of course, some mittens because we wanna keep warm in the cold. Before we go ahead and get into the scarf. Now, the scarf is cute because they came out with a vest scarf. Listen, if we are in a scarf, mo I mean, a vest moment, I'm here for us also being in with this like vest scarf moment, okay? Then we've got a couple of different head coverings. I personally have already pulled out some fabric for the head coverings. We've got the sun bonnet. This isn't what I pulled out the fabric for. We also have a coolie hat. Also not what I pulled out, it pulled it out for. But the triangle scarf, that's what I pulled out that fabric for. I know it's just a triangle, it'll be fine. It's very easy. And then they have a couple of accessories for babies, which include the baby bonnet, as well as the baby bunting. So there are a total of 64 things that are inside of this book that are marketed that you can make in under 60 minutes and going through this book, I totally believe. Now I will say that going into the book, one of the things that you will need to make sure that you've done is taking your accurate measurements and going ahead and have those in front of you. You'll definitely need your bust measurement, your waist measurement, as well as your hip measurement. These patterns are not something that you would actually need your side waist measurement or your side hip measurement for, because generally speaking, they don't really need that much, much uh, detail because they are not really a fitted, they don't have very many fitted patterns but you will need to know how long you want for your garment to hit. So that's some another measurement that you will likely need to make sure that you take, which is like your collarbone on down to wherever you would want any of these dresses or skirts to end. So outside of that, this book is easy breezy. And I'm really excited because after going through it in detail, like I did just now, we've got a couple of pieces of content that are coming our way. So if you heard one of the, th the items that I said aloud and you're like, girl, can you please make this? Definitely drop it in a comment and we can do this tutorial together and make, I don't know, your girl Veronica committed to being a vintage baddie. Anyway, that is all that we have for today. Also, if you happen to see the small book that's like this, that has the Bohemian styles, please let your girl know send me some pictures or something because I am looking for it. Okay. That is it for now. And I hope I see you on the next video. Please make sure that you have a liked subscribe.